Hello, handsome listeners. This is your very good friend, Tig Notaro, along with my co-hosts, Fortune Feimster and Mae Martin. Hello, friends. Hello, Hello friends. Uh, hello. <laughs> uh, I have to tell everyone um, oh. just ahead of time. Oh, yeah. Everyone buckle in um, ahead of time. If you do end up seeing a clip on Zoom, mm-hmm. I did something I haven't done before, and I adjusted <laughs> my face on Zoom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you on, use on, the touch-up the uh, touch up. option. I've never done it. You and I, Fortune, we've been on this train for years. Like, yeah. I am touched up to the max, and I'm, I'm shocked that you're not, Tig. And how do I you am feel now. about it? I am now. I am now. I touched it, up. How does it feel? Well, I... I, you know, I'm, I'll be 53 in March and I would say I look 49. I'd say you look like a pretty little lady. I'd say that too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Girlfriend. I don't mind a touch up because I have these bags under my eyes Mm -hmm. and it helps. It just wipes them away and you know now i'm glowing <laughs> but then I, people see you in person that's my issue and they go, is, yeah they're like oh my god you have a week to live <laughs> <laughs> i want to use every tool at my disposal to look like a wax figure <laughs> i want to be smooth and waxy do you think you're gonna have um or maybe you already have face stuff done Oh, I've had a oh. full facelift. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure I will. I, I think the technology is going to get so good that it's just uh-huh. going to be like a little zap. And and yeah, I got I got nothing against it. I don't want to. I mean, the nightmare is looking like you know. Like and would you it. just would you just do injections of like Botox, or would you get an actual like? Uh, I think I'm actually more inclined to wait till I really feel like. I want to do a full facelift. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> thought about this before and then do that. But yeah, I'm do a- not do anything right now. You're young and gorgeous. No, we're talking. Fortune. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> but those injectables are sketch, aren't they? People look very I've never inflated. had them. I know this is hard to believe you guys, but I've never had work done. <laughs> I haven't either, except on Zoom. That's where I go get my free work done. I picture taking my face off if I do anything. This is the only thing that I'm willing to do is have my face completely removed. What? And then put an iron, use an iron to just iron out all the wrinkles. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's pretty smart, right? Oh, I can't wait for technology to catch up to that. (laughs) I can. I so viscerally could see that process. I can. I also think that I would be willing to do this process where I just hold what my, is that? Oh. I just hold my fing- face this way. Oh, you're With just going to leave your just hands like it. that? Yeah. That's a cheap way to do well, it. Well, they have a version of that. I think it's called, um, what is it? Strings or something? Yeah. No. What is it? Strings? People do it. I, I know what you're threads, talking about. Threads. That's what it is. They do it when they're, when they're filming <laughs> stuff. Mm-hmm. People tuck it underneath their hairline yeah. and it's just literally pulling, it's pulling, pulling it back their skin. Hi. Back in the old days, they used to just have used tape. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there are people, there are pictures of people with like scotch tape <laughs> on their ears. Hollywood magic. Yeah. I know. It's all smoke oh and mirrors. It's all oh. smoke and mirrors. Don't you talk about my town like that. (laughs) I think we're all handsome as we are. Wait, Mm -hmm. but if if people are using just scotch tape and stuff, by that logic, couldn't I, if I wanted a more permanent solution, I could use super glue. I could just fold it over and use a little bit of super glue. To be clear, clear, the scotch tape didn't work great. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, let's go back. (laughs) <laughs> it wasn't a great option. They were like, something's better than nothing, but it wasn't great. It seems like um, technology will get to a place where you can just put your face. I mean, it's probably already there. It's probably actually way past my invention I'm about to share. Okay. Okay. Thomas put this on the list. No. <laughs> but um, where you just have a computer recognize your face, do all your touch ups and on the screen. And then you just look like that throughout the whole movie. Oh yeah, yeah I like I that. Think people are already doing that, aren't they? Okay. Well, no one's giving me the option. Wait, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. You wanted Thomas to put that on the list. So <laughs> Thomas, put it on the list, please, so you could, for like, our <laughs> patent that idea. Yes, Thomas, <laughs> patent that, please. <laughs> well, because now we're on YouTube. Handsome is on YouTube, so mm-hmm. we are right. going to need that feature. I don't know if take for 
for one Mississippi, you were in the edit. Um, mm-hmm. Like I, so I was, there were a couple of times where I was really pushing them to like get rid of zits or like smooth out my skin tone. And it would get to a point where they were like, if we just do this for you and no one else, it's going to look really weird. Oh <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause but, you would have this like smooth face and everybody else is like, yeah, I had to normal. I had to let go of that. Yeah. I, I, I didn't, uh, it never dawned on me. I think when I was doing that, I maybe I wasn't, I mean, I for sure wasn't quite as old as I am now. There's certainly been movies and TV shows I've been on where it's alarming when I come on camera. Because uh, <laughs> everyone, <a>, else <laughs> everyone else looks so good and Whatever. smoothed out. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm in this scene too. No, uh, you're crazy. Well, no, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not somebody that's terribly hard on myself in, mm-hmm. in that way. Um, but it, I would say in the past couple of years, I've certainly noticed a change in my, uh, in my look, which is why I haven't done any adjustments on Zoom and other things because I do think it can be alarming when you see people in person when they're all their face is always adjusted and then you, and then you see them right. and it's like oh what's going on? Well, yeah. I saw you in person the other night and I was very happy about it. Okay, well, I was happy to see you, but you that doesn't mean that. And you I'm, look great. Was my, that's, my point. That, that's what I was waiting for. There you go. So, yeah. Uh, what, what were you guys doing? Just hanging out, a couple of handsome. A, a friend of ours had a Christmas <laughs> thing for their uh, company. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. And uh, neither of us knew the other was going to be there. Mm-mm. That's fine, as and long as then, it wasn't like a one-on-one handsome excursion where you're dressed up like cowboys on we were never without you propeller hats (laughs) propeller hats all we're just like may who (laughs) where's that little cowboy yeah you just hired you hire a little boy to (laughs) to tag along yeah that we pull in a wagon just me and fortune walking down the road arm in arm and just pulling a little red wagon (laughs) with a little cowboy in the back well, we ended up sitting in the corner talking with each other for like two hours. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Well, I yeah. had, I told Tig I had just watched Tig's documentary. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to, I'd seen it before back when it came out, but I wanted to see it again now that I'm seeing Tig Podcasting. on a much regular basis just to sort of, you know, revisit that time in her life. Yeah, me yeah. too. I I felt the same thing. I want to rewatch it. Um, yeah. It's yeah, a good I, time. It made me cry. It made me cry, but it also made me very happy for where Tig is at in life. Oh, well, thank that. you. Thank mm-hmm. you. Um, uh, guys, yeah. I, I had a... Oh, this is... I'm sorry. This is no, a big I thought thing. you were going to say, guys, I have to go. <laughs> guys, um, <laughs> I got to go. Uh, we're giving Tig too much attention. I got to bounce. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. No, no I had a, a facial for the first time the other day. Have you oh. ever had one? many yeah i like a facial really yeah Yeah. Yeah. i've never had one i think i have i mean it's becoming obvious as we talk about these things i have like weird face stuff and image stuff i think there's a lot of talk about skin and skincare in my house when i was a kid and faces Mm -hmm. um but i've never liked people touching my face or or feeling like there's anything on my face but Mm -hmm. uh this woman who I'm involved with and live with bought Heavily me involved with. woman I'm involved with whose bed I share. Yes. And have <laughs> Some might it. call her my girlfriend. Girlfriend. <laughs> girlfriend. Um, mm-hmm. She bought me a facial as a present. Oh. And actually the woman doing the facial was a, a previous survivor contestant. So I was really excited to go as I'm yeah. a deep survivor fan. And uh, it was awesome. And, and she, she did these, um, vibrating forks that she held i had that you haven't mm. had the forks. doesn't sound like you had a facial <laughs> i don't know so what i had sounds like you're a pa <laughs> i mean i i came so <laughs> is that normal uh wait, <laughs> wait, no. wait. <laughs> i'm joking i didn't i didn't come but it was it was great and she did like um what else oh, did never do? mind i did not do that <laughs> it was amazing it was so relaxing and uh did she ever touch your face though like yeah, did she, she ever give you a facial aside from the other weird stuff yeah I, mm. she 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 gave me like a facial massage and then i guess mm. she did the extraction thing uh-huh yeah. 
which I wish I could have watched it. Is that gross? Mm. Like I wanted to see up Some close. people love that. Stephanie loves extracting things. They have that yes. show, Dr. Pimple Popper. Yes, yes. they do. They oh. That's all they show and people are obsessed. Oh my, it is so gross. I, uh, you hate it? I hate it so much. <laughs> it's, I hate it, but can't look away. I, I guess think, probably me too. I guess what's psychologically like satisfying about it is the clear like at the end it's all clean and clear like yeah. it's seeing the, yeah because i i do enjoy them but and you didn't have a problem with her touching your face no i had to it was like exposure therapy because i really mm-hmm. hate i had this acquaintance who used to at parties i barely knew her and she would come up and put both her hands on my face oh god and mm. kiss me on the mouth Mm-mm. no no and no 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 no, no, no. time I, out I know. And I would I, not be into that. Mm-mm. So finally, after like years of this, I said to her one time, you have to stop doing that. I really mm-hmm. don't like when you touch my face. And and she did it again. So <gasps> I thought, well, no. Was, yeah. So what did you do? I think I just sort of would avoid her after that. Like mm-hmm. I, I kind of thought, well, I gave you the warning. Yeah. And um, now you don't you know, get me. Now I'm now running you- across the room. Well, I have to say, May, this is another one of those two against one situations, I think, unless fortune speaks up. We'll see. I cannot stand my face being touched. Oh, Oh, I don't care. But Jack takes it. Okay, so Tig, you and I are... Yeah, yeah. two against one here. I Mm -hmm. cannot stand it. However, um, you know, Stephanie, I'm good and fine with that. You know, if I'm with somebody and I'm involved, I, I don't mind. But when somebody just... Oof. well strangers or a person you don't know that well is weird but even you fortune i don't want you touching my face but yeah. i wouldn't i love wouldn't you dearly touch, not i wouldn't clearly, touch your face you know what i mean i well i i understand but i i'm just saying i <laughs> no. no 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 absolutely not yeah it's not okay i touch my face and my mouth jacks is always like stop touching your face Stop oh, touching really? your face. <laughs> okay, so Jax is with us. Jax yeah, she. I have touched Jax's face once in our nine years together, and no. never again. She hates it. <sighs> really? She's a. She. Hers is a big. She's a germ person. Very yeah. big. Loves uh, anti germ. Oh oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just doesn't also like her face being touched. So yeah. I, I got it's... the message on the first go. I often get. Um, told by audience members and things that i'm neurodivergent i feel like it's like a spectrum isn't it of different things and like there are things that i think you're uh, like sensitivity to physical Mm -hmm. touch and things like that or like uh, you know walking on my toes all the time (laughs) i don't know i have i've heard that word more lately but i truth be told don't know what it entails me neither me neither okay i think that it feels like yeah maybe thomas can tell us at some point um but um i've heard it but i don't feel neurodivergent but i also maybe don't know what neurodivergent is it would be hard for us to know if we are that if we don't know what it is yeah oh here it is here we go definition thomas comes in very big-handed okay differing in (laughs) differing in mental or neurological function from what is considered typical or normal i mean these but all these words like isn't everybody everybody isn't everybody i i used to do this thing asking you know i like to ask questions and one of them is like do you feel different to most people Mm -hmm. everyone says yes it kind of reminds me of when people like to say that you know when you say oh i'm a comedian and they say oh gosh that's such a dark world and um everybody everybody's so depressed and and it and i just feel like comedians are at a microphone and can and are are on a stage so you're hearing about it but if you go next door your neighbor is probably dark or depressed or your mail carrier it's just that musicians comedians you have a platform yeah i bet there's like tortured button makers you know famously for sure button makers famously oh, yes they lots are lots of tortured button makers they're drinking oh my. have you ever heard of joe joe the button maker hi my name is joe i have a wife and three kids and i work in a button factory one day my wife came and she said joe are you busy i said no 
guys. <laughs> um, um, nobody's I, heard that. I've rarely. What are you talking about? I've rarely been speechless in that way. I feel like Tig and like I were a, both. It's like speechless. a song for kids. Anybody works in a button factory. But what kid would love that terrible no, but song? Th- no, but then, guys, stay what with me. What happens to <laughs> Joe? <laughs> and said, hi, I'm busy. And, or, you know, and then she said, turn the button with your left hand. So you start doing this. Okay? The kids uh-huh. are, uh, if, for those of you who can't see, I'm turning the button. So then you start over. You go, hi, my name is Joe. I have a wife and three kids and work in a button factory. One day, my wife came and she said, Is this the first song oh, busy? ever said, no. written for children? He yeah. said, turn the button with your right hand. Now you're doing this. Oh, See, the kids God. are moving their hands. Okay, so but... So what? Oh. Why are the... Why is his life story so kind of Because it rhymes. And, like, and boring. I mean, guys. it's just like... Hey, my name is Joe. I'm I telling have a family. you, family. I'm going that, to work. I'm telling I'm you, sing this a song button. with a, a five year old and see if they like it. You move all, you're turning your buttons with all your limbs. So I the kids are like doing all these movements. I feel like the bar is higher now. Why that, not the hokey pokey? Why do Turn why we have to limit around? ourselves to one? Joe, the button pusher or button maker? He works in a button factory, you guys. And he, <laughs> I, you said there's probably dark button button maker no i know how we got there but i'm shocked that this is i've never heard of it and it sounds like in the olden days where they hadn't invented toys yet and they gave people like a stick to play with it's like that it's like they hadn't invented songs yet and they went i guess this is a song yeah they hadn't invented a children's song and then somebody (laughs) that had terrible ideas a terrible voice he's probably uh, called joe i don't think i don't think you two are the target audience okay (laughs) i think i I think my five-year-old friends (laughs) <laughs> that love songs that rhyme are fans of Joe and his button factory. Okay. Well, it's also on the same album as <laughs> I'm Betsy and I walk down the street. I put on my shoes and I wave to people. Cause this I'm sounds like Betsy you made that and up. I have a hand and I can wave to people <laughs> on the street. I and haven't heard one rhyme. There's Betsy with her hands waving at us. She has shoes on. Betsy, Tig, not one rhyme. Wait, if, I don't. Every five year old right now is like, the song needs. You know what the song needs? More rhyming. But there's no, no rhymes in the Joe one. Hi, I'm, my name is Joe. <laughs> I have a wife and three kids and I work in a button factory. Hold that on. That doesn't rhyme. One no, day, doesn't rhyme. <laughs> came and she's a Joe. Are you busy? Here we go. I said no. Come on. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so God. Joe and no. That's the only rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Joe! Is what the song should. But so it I'm turns Betsy. out there's only one rhyme, and I'm. But <laughs> there's a lot here. <laughs> there's one rhyme. There is nothing there. I was more into Betsy's story. She at least had a little pep. She was walking May- down the street. You know what? Betsy's a real bitch. Hi, y- my yeah, name you is write Betsy. A song. No, you yeah. write a new oh, song, okay, May. Okay, here we go. Hi, my name is Jessica. And I walked to school, but on the way, I saw a bus. It was a yellow bus. Oh. And, I, and on the bus was my old teacher, who I hadn't seen since I was a little toddler. Hit that song. Rhyme, Hit uh, song. You know what I, you know what I take bombed, from this? I could have done a lot better. I'm going to No, sleep, not there's no sleep. way to top what you did, May. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I take from this experience? Nothing. Because there was nothing <laughs> happening. There was, noth- there was no song. There was no I rhyme. I think that my song has inspired you guys to write other songs. That is That's a true. positive twist. And it would be called an inspiration. Hi, <laughs> my name is Betsy, and I have hands, and I wave at people. Look, it's Joe, the guy that has buttons. I need to Google to make sure he does work in a button factory. <laughs> oh, my God. If he does that? <laughs> what? Where else? <laughs> if it's a bucket factory, we're... Cause oh, no, I- it is button factory. Oh, thank God. I will clarify one part of the song. Please, which then it'll th- all make sense. <laughs> this part always threw me. I was like, why is wi- uh, Joe's wife coming in to the button factory? It turns out it's his boss, not his wife. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes, you guys, no, 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 we don't time. need to hear this. Hey, we don't need my to name hear is this Joe, again. 
and I work in a button Jesus. factory. Oh, wait, I did it. I got it out of order. Let me do it See, the right that's way. That's why it didn't sound familiar. Hey, my name, is, my name is Joe, and I work in a button factory. And one day, my boss came up to me. He says, Joe, I said, oh, wait, this person rewrote it. Never mind. <laughs> this no, also let's doesn't hear it. rhyme either. I think I think people are making their Turning own versions. Turning this off and leaving this the show. This person says, I've got a wife and a dog and a family. <laughs> Oh my god, I got a wife and a dog and a family. <laughs> this reminds me of on SNL years ago. You know that Tracy Chapman song, Fast Car? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You they have did. Fast car. Fast enough, you can fly away. You can make a Luke decision. Luke Holmes just re, re it. Yeah, redid it. And, um, but on SNL years ago, they imitated Tracy Chapman sitting in her apartment in like New York and holding her guitar and looking out of the window and just being like, basically <laughs> say what you see, naming anything she sees. <laughs> That's, That's funny. funny. I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, that was That's a good. That's a good one. I don't think there will ever be a moment in time that I'm in a conversation with someone and a button factory will come up and it will give me the opportunity to sing about Joe. So I just want to say. Thank you guys for giving me that moment. You're welcome. And I want to say, how dare you <laughs> push that s terrible song onto us? <laughs> People were mad at y'all a while ago for when y'all didn't know what bread and butter pickles are, just so you know. Uh, are, were they mad? Can we can we? Can yeah, we say people. <laughs> people were saying that they were screaming into the e ethers. Well, Do you think bread and butter is a pickle. Do you think there's My Name is Joe fans at home? There will be a handful of people that say, I know exactly what Fortune's talking about. That was my favorite song from my childhood. And then everybody else will be like, I've never heard of that song. I don't know why it's bumming me out so much to think about a kid who that's their favorite song. Oh, no. Why is it's, it bumming me It's out? so sad. God. It, that, you you want to talk about dark and depressing. You guys, kids love it because there's movement that goes with the song. If my kids came home from school and were like, oh, my gosh, we just learned this incredible song. And they're like, my name is Joe and I work in a button factory and I push buttons and... I would, would you call the principal? Well, I would probably move them to a different school. Yeah. Oh, no. I think that's a reasonable reaction. You don't think kids are coming home going, when you're sliding in the first and you feel a big burst diarrhea. <gasps> oh, my God. That just brought back so many memories. See, that's fun. Of uh, <laughs> memories of your Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Of having explosions. Oh, time. no. Yes. <laughs> Oh, by the way, yeah. not to change the subject, but real no, quick. No, please do. Please do. <laughs> please Tig, do. Yeah. You told us a couple mm. episodes back about the benefits of treading water for a long time. Yeah. Have you started? I've done it twice now. <gasps> no How way. How awesome does it yeah. feel? It's really great. I did it for 20 minutes each time. Fortune, oh I'm so happy for you. And when I'm in the water, I'm like, there's no way this can be like, doing anything because it doesn't feel that right. intense right and it's i put on you. i put on a podcast one day put on some music the next day because i can't just sit there with my thoughts for 20 minutes was it the handsome podcast you put it on? it was it was a handsome podcast of course. and um and i was like oh that wasn't bad i set an alarm mm -hmm. and uh to wake up last night <laughs> Last you're treading night, asleep right last night i told jacks like five times i go i'm really sore and she's like i got it you worked out <laughs> but it it did more than i thought it did oh my gosh and it works your entire body and this is not a commercial for, <laughs> for treading, uh, treading, water. treading water but um but man do i try and encourage people if if they can find any interest in trying it out and it works for them because it makes my whole body not just feel stronger mm -hmm. but like it loosens it up yeah and i feel powerful even though i've done it twice i'm like yeah. i'm probably the strongest person there is probably we could wrestle each other after you work up i gotta tonight. do it for a while well <laughs> and you have to move up to an hour at a time do you think I you can't can even use... imagine an hour though you for real do it an hour each? every single time and i've never ducked out one minute early and not how, once how many days a week do you do that I only do it when it makes sense. I don't have like a, okay. a workout regimen or anything uh -huh. um, or a schedule. But um, yeah, I when I go on tour, I bring my lesbian bathing suit and I... Sweatpants? Um, 
sweatpants, a bonnet, and a winter coat. <laughs> Can I ask, do you guys ever... Hiking boots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, time for our question. This is an exciting episode. It's a very exciting episode. We have a question from... From an from, icon. From your... Your good friend, who's also one of the best actresses out there. She's pretty good. She's pretty good. Pretty okay. good. Terrible person, but pretty good at <laughs> yeah. acting. Uh, she's an Emmy and Golden Globe winning actress known for her roles in American Horror Story, The Bear, American Crime Story, Carol, many, many more. She even made an appearance on my old podcast, Don't Ask Tig, and I cannot encourage you enough to go back and listen to that I episode. I cried laughing L- at that episode. Listen to the whole episode, but also find the video online <laughs> of yeah. them is, talking about a gavel. It yeah. is so, this particular gavel that I hold mm-hmm. whenever hey. I'm <laughs> podcasting. Uh, it is... The wonderful, and I'm embarrassed to say that because we don't talk to each other that way, but she is wonderful. She's one of the funniest people alive, Sarah Paulson. Okay, this question's coming from her. Hey, handsome pod, it's Sarah Paulson. And my question for you is, do you believe forgiveness is truly attainable? Mm. Mm. And it could be a multi-pronged question. Do you believe we as human beings are capable of true forgiveness? Not do you believe in forgiveness as a principle or an idea, but do you believe that we as human beings are capable of forgiveness? Mm. And if so, what does forgiveness look like to you? Okay. Look, I know I teeter up as one of the funniest (laughs) people I know. I like it. She's getting deep. She goes I, deep. I, I met her once, only once, and uh, I sa- I really ran up to her with the familiarity that I shouldn't <laughs> have had. Did you? And I went, yeah. oh my god, we both know Tig. And and but she was sort of at first a little bit affronted that I just <laughs> run up to her, and then as soon as I said your name, she just like lit up and was so so sweet to me. Yeah. I, I think I met her backstage at that standout fest or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, that and I, Netflix thing we yeah, did? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had never met her before, but I know so many people that are dear, dear friends of hers that I'm yeah. like, well, obviously, obviously we're now dear <laughs> <Your> friends. Friend. <laughs> yeah, She's yeah, like, yeah. I don't know you. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Dear friends by proxy. No, she was very nice, but we just don't know each other. Uh-huh. Um, but I'm like, this person's your good friend and they're also my friend. And she's yeah. like, great. <laughs> Step back. <laughs> yeah, a security guard just comes and removes you. Can you please remove this woman? <laughs> But I'm friends with Tig too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, if we if she and I are not ever friends one day, I, I can't even say that. That's I don't even terrible. say it. But she is such a treat to watch on screen and she has never not crushed it in an acting role. Oh my god. And I truly she is somebody that I laugh so hard with. It's mm-hmm. stupid. Stephanie and I both were just like when we have plans with Sarah, we're like, we are in for it for a real good <laughs> oh, cackle. That's so good. Yeah. yeah those God. kind of friends are nice to have. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think anyone says that about me. I, I'm just trying to think. <laughs> if I anyone, doubt that. I don't know if anyone goes, we are going to cackle. I think I, you know, I usually got something going on. I want to get about deep. It. I want to get deep. Like, yeah. I, well, now we're now as you're in the zone. This is your chance to get deep because this was a deeper question. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll kick, I'll kick it off. I'll kick yeah. it off about forgiveness. I think, well, I like the, the specificity of the question, like, is it is it possible, really, mm-hmm. to fully forgive someone? I, I think I think it, it is, uh, but there might be, like, some scar tissue there, and, mm-hmm. and, and things might never be the same, but I, I, I feel like the evidence that it is possible is, if you think back to, like... Uh, your 20s or something or or uh, how do I say this like there's stories from my life that for a long time I couldn't tell the stories without being physically tense telling them and, and my heart rate going up and feeling it in my body in such a 
tangible way and then having then processed it and dealt with it and like felt the anger and then got to a place of forgiveness or acceptance and that doesn't mean like staying best friends with the person i can now mm-hmm. tell the stories without having a physical physiological reaction mm-hmm. and i think that's like proof that you can actually let go of things in mm-hmm. in that way you know what i mean like mm-hmm. i'll say the one the one other thing is like you imagine you get shot or something and then you know the wound heals over unless you can feel like you have to first feel the anger and the pain like you have to go in and through the excruciating process of digging the bullet out mm-hmm. uh so that the wound can actually heal because if you don't dig the bullet out because you're scared of actually feeling it then mm-hmm. it'll slowly toxify your body over time that's mm-hmm. my an- an analogy what do you think sarah paulson <laughs> well i think letting go is a big part of it which is probably the hardest thing for people to do right yeah because a lot of some people like really have their identity around holding yeah. on to trauma mm-hmm. to being yes. that victim mm-hmm. and they don't want to whether or not they realize it or not sub- mm-hmm. co- subconsciously they don't want to let go of it because they've built who they are so far around being wronged mm-hmm. you know so that that's a hurdle that some people have to overcome to truly forgive and you don't want to lose your connection to that to that person maybe or to that thing and like the anger and the resentment is almost it's it's still a connection to that person it's scary to let go of that sometimes and Mm -hmm. but sometimes like forgiving someone and letting go is kind of that's the best revenge in a way Mm -hmm. i mean i guess to give sort of like a specific a specific example in my life without going too far deep into it um we want I mean, names we want names <laughs> well, yeah well my mom i mean my just mom would say, it, just say it's about joe in the button that's factory. right my mom would uh, say talk about this too and uh so it's not like a secret like our relationship has definitely evolved mm-hmm. over time when i was young we just really um got into it and and did not see eye to eye and like really struggled for a long time in our relationship and it was such a source of um pain for me back then and there was a time in my life where i was like i just don't know if we'll ever get over our Mm -hmm. the humps that we have and we kind of always have this dynamic i don't remember it started when i was young but i don't remember exactly when where i was kind of felt like more of the adult Mm -hmm. and she felt like kind of more of the kid and i was always kind of the one like talking in the adult kind of way and and i remember i was moved the first time i ever like really realized like i missed my mom was when i i lived in spain for a year and something about being far away from each other i go i really miss my mom and that started some of my healing towards Mm. those issues that we had and I, i had a very pivotal moment where I was moving to LA after I got from Spain, back from Spain. And she's like, I'll go with you if you want. And I said, sure. So we'll take a road trip, try to, you know, reconnect and see what each other's like. We hadn't been around each other much in a year. And we were walking through Vegas. It was along our way. And I talked to her in a way that was that adult talking to a child, kind of reprimanding. Mm-hmm. And someone said, don't talk to your mom like that. And, um, Whoa. But I somebody talk- overheard you. Yeah, yeah. A but I wasn't ta- said that. Yeah, and Holy I go and, and I go, I and I talked to her that way because I had resentment, mm-hmm. right? I had yeah. resentment from our issues. I couldn't let them go. Yeah. And when I heard that, I thought, oh, as I had this light bulb moment of like, if I don't let go of this resentment and this hurt and let her grow we'll never have a relationship yeah like, i can't and also her job was to be not the person you know she had to grow up too yeah. and Crucially. change i couldn't just forgive her without also there being some change on her part and it really changed our relationship we yeah. started from that moment talking to each other better seeing each other in a different light and i was like i have to allow her now to be my mom and me be the kid vegas does that (laughs) vegas does do that vegas Uh, is so healing (laughs) but we have had we're very close now a lot of people 
you know she's in my comedy a lot I, she's yeah. been on another podcast that i do that we that she's a big part of my life and we're very close mm -hmm. but it was such a journey did you directly address like everything with her or is there some stuff that's just water under the bridge that you don't talk because that's my thing there's a yeah. lot of stuff i can't talk about with, um yeah. we will talk candidly about so, some things mm -hmm. and go you know man that you know that was a tough time that was mm -hmm. a really hard time and then there are other things she just doesn't want to talk about it's too hard yeah mm -hmm. for her yeah. to talk about you know she she after my parents divorced they just both kind of took some time to find themselves and you know it was just a tough time and mm -hmm. she doesn't love that time in her life um and and even now if i've tried to like touch on it and stand up she's like i don't like that i don't mm -hmm. like it. it's too hard for her mm -hmm. and i get it i get it you know but um and does she let you do it do you continue to do it or do you drop the material i drop the like the big details of it and mm -hmm. kind of just touch on a little bit of the yeah, yeah. lighter stuff what if uh -huh. you found out one of two things one that she had paid that person in vegas to say that <laughs> and hired someone or two that it was me who said that <laughs> that i was the stranger who said that and you took the cash and you yeah. took the cash okay yeah. the irony is that i was a good kid mm -hmm. like i was a very like i was a good responsible kid i did everything i was supposed to do so it's when i tell you that story it sounds like i was a piece of shit no i was no, talking bad to my mom but it was just we had developed such a different a weird relationship in that way where i had to kind of be like you know reprimanding her yeah mm -hmm. and um because she had not taken on the the adult reins it for a few years and i had stepped into this other role and we had to shift back into our yeah. roles and it was it was a weirdly powerful moment mm -hmm. like that if I had been in a different place with her, I would have heard that and be like, "You don't understand." <laughs> like yeah, it's, it's our so past like case specific too, because with like some relationships, you if you decide I want to have this person in my life, then that's mm -hmm. one thing. Then you kind of you got, but other people you can forgive them and still decide like, I yeah. I, I can't have that person in my life, mm -hmm. but I, mm -hmm. I still forgive them. Which yeah. I think that happens too, or quite a bit, where people are like, I do forgive that person, but I'm, I'm moving on. I yeah. for sure have had that, where mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, yeah. Where and does it help you, once you make that decision of like, I can't have you in my life, does that help you to sort of forgive them? Like having the space and... <sighs> well, there's that. Um, I think there's also people I've forgiven where I've just been like, yeah, I don't care if you're in my life or not in my life or uh, it, where it's just like, I'm just done. And, mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, I think there's different levels of people yeah. where I was like hard pass, toxic, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. Keep it moving. Then yeah. there are other people where I'm like, I feel like there's some toxicity there. There's a hard pass, no thank you. But there's also like, I can be around you. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I get why you are the way you are or the way our dynamic does not gel. But like we were saying, May, before we got on this episode, my ex that I was with during when my life fell apart in 2012, we were so estranged. Yeah. It was tough times. Mm -hmm. But now... Like literally last night, yeah. our families were hanging out together. The latest Max and Finn have ever been out at night. We had <laughs> so much fun. Yeah. And she texted me this morning, just like, we have to do that all the time. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. the best feeling to like. I know. So then you think, like, <sighs> well, if now you're so reaping the benefits of having that person back in yeah. your life, then it's like, I think I, I owe, even though I can have really firm or I'm learning to have like firm boundaries with people who I think are really bad in my life. I, I the door is kind of always open if they, mm -hmm. if the growth is there and mm -hmm. they come, people are actually doing the work on themselves. I, there are so few people that are like ir irredeemable, right. In the, mm -hmm. in the world, like mm -hmm. as long as you're just protecting yourself and I find it a lot harder if people are hurting like people I love, then mm -hmm. I can go hog wild. Yeah. yeah and you, like, you don't want to see me go hog wild guys it's uh <laughs> we don't oh, want geez. that may's going Button. hard wild <laughs> buttons flying well time certainly helps with a lot of healing and forgiveness and things and 
you have to kind of decide, do I want this person in my life anymore? Um, and sometimes you have a, a conversation with each other where there is forgiveness and you go, thank you for saying that. And I wish you well, you know, and yeah. mm-hmm. I, there are some, I, I, ne- I don't have a lot of people in my life where I don't talk to them anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but every now and then you just kind of grow apart or for whatever reason. And the best thing is just like, I do genuinely wish you well. Yes. Well, and I think that's something that people don't understand is that sometimes relationships run their course and Mm -hmm. it's completely fine to cut that loose. And it doesn't have to be dramatic. It doesn't have to be uh, ruthless or mean, but it's just like this relationship is friendship, work, whatever. It's just Mm -hmm. not... it's not, not making you feel good anymore. No. Yeah. yeah. And and that's I am all right. Su- super grateful though for like the forgiveness I've been afforded by people as well. Mm-hmm. Like I, mm-hmm. I I have an ex who I'm, is a very good friend of mine who like gets <laughs> really but I also had to do the conciliatory work of like yeah. taking mm-hmm. responsibility for stuff. But oh man, I'm so I I try to think about that and then also I there's some quote that's like mercy like real mercy is what you give people who don't deserve it like mm-hmm. and that's what really takes effort but it, if if you can get there like it's uh it's a real physical relief on yourself it's even just from a selfish point of view like it is heavy carrying around that raging sense of injustice mm-hmm. you know i talked to an ex of mine that um it was a little awkward because yeah. we are good friends and I know I was not at all meeting her at the same level. Um, And uh, frankly, that's been many relationships of mine where I just wasn't available and I couldn't do, I just wasn't capable Mm -hmm. and I wasn't present. When you were dating? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or maybe I didn't, we just didn't have exactly the same feelings, but um, I could really see how I was hurtful to this person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was like years, I mean, like so long, probably over a decade after we dated that I like really was like, Hey, um, I just wanted to say something, you know, Mm -hmm. and just brought that up, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And had a very uncomfortable, where she was so (laughs) open and, kind about it but i just needed to yeah. say i know i hurt your feelings and mm-hmm. yeah i was not easy and i am sorry yeah and it i'm just i was just thankful that she was open to hearing that and yeah that's great well don't you think a lot of those like way down the road apologies are more for yourself for sure. Then for the other person, you're like, I just need Big them time. to know. A million I, percent. But it yeah. also felt good to know that because I, I don't think I fully understood mm-hmm. the ways that I hurt her. Right. Until yeah. I did some growing and changing. And yes, it helped me feel better. But I do feel like the way she received it and said, I think she even said thank you, and I can't imagine that was easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and I could. I think it was. I think it did it <clears throat> land, and it yeah. felt good to her to hear yeah. that. Yeah, and that's always nice because sometimes, sometimes you're like you know deep down like that it wasn't you per se, but when then when someone tells you, you feel like a little less nutty. You're like, yeah, oh. yeah. Oh my so gosh. Glad, yeah, like I'm so glad I wasn't like in Or when there are when there's people that are toxic that hurt you and you hear from other people how mm-hmm. toxic and hurtful those people oh, were. That's so validating. And you're that like is the juiciest feeling. You experience that too? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. But man, you hear about these stories of like uh, what's it, like restorative justice or like people who've had mm-hmm. family members murdered and then they go oh. to the prison and they're sitting with yeah. the murderer and saying, I forget. Like, that's pretty amazing. And yeah, yeah, that's I'm uh, always in awe of those people standing in a courtroom in front of someone that's murdered someone they love. And when they offer that true f- forgiveness, you're like that. You had to dig deep for that. And it's pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I th- I think there people certainly can reach true forgiveness. A, it depends on the person who's doing that forgiving. It depends on who it's towards. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I, I think there's it, a lot yeah. of circumstances there. Yeah, and sometimes you got to do it without expecting reciprocity. Like just mm-hmm. do it inside Anything, yourself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do you guys forgive me for before when I improvised the song and it wasn't funny or good? Mm. Oh, I I or didn't hold any it? resentment towards you. I was impressed that you I, were I trying do. to make your own song. Yeah, I could take it. Yeah. yeah, I guess. Do you guys forgive me? I still for I don't forgive you for Joe Joe the button <laughs> pusher. Can you please forgive me for bringing up Joe the button maker? No. Look, I'm going to forgive you only so I can release myself from the anger. But okay. I don't. But I haven't forgotten. That is true. If you hold on to anger, it is just not good for you. Yeah, mm. it's true. Oh my God! That's great true. bumper sticker. <laughs> also, <laughs> by the way, when you mentioned friendships running courses, it takes me back to the old reason season lifetime. What's that? Have you you guys never that? heard that? No. Mm-hmm. So you have friends for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Friends come into your life for a reason. You're both at a certain place in your life. Oh, where I have heard that. Maybe you're single and you can like go to the bar together, hang out, or like you're missing something in your life and this person really brought something in that for that specific moment in time, you needed that person in your life. Uh, so that friendship might run its course because it was there for that specific reason and now it's no longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, a, a season, season is just like, oh, I was really good friends with this person. We hung out all the time and now we don't hang out because we're busy. Mm-hmm. There's no hard feelings. It's just, yeah, it's just like a season of your life. And then the friends that are there for a lifetime, like this is a person... I've known forever. We can go months and months and months without talking. We pick up where we left off Mm -hmm. and that friendship will always be. I like that. And have you actually applied that fortune where you're like, yeah, reason, season, lifetime. And then you just, I just text them. Reason, season, lifetime. I just text them. (laughs) (laughs) If I can can imagine just getting a reason, season, (laughs) lifetime. And that's all it says on a text. (laughs) Or what if you, you make a new friend and you send them like, three check boxes reason season or lifetime they check which one and then you know going into it what your expectations yeah what are. they think it is yeah. but things change that's true things, things do change. change you have some friends you think are lifetimers and oh you, my gosh you, it's crazy yeah when lifetimes you, are seasons it fizzles out mm-hmm. yeah but that goes uh-huh. with dating too reason mm-hmm. season lifetime yeah. I, mean, I think you guys are starting to get into this rhyming thing <laughs> well yeah and you need to because you sang an entire uncatchy song <laughs> with not a rhyme with not a, not a rhyme going, reason season or lifetime because in i it. believe in true forgiveness mm-hmm. i'm going to forgive you guys for trashing my button song <laughs> do you i i don't know if i've told this on the pod before this little uh anecdote about a bird and stuff mm. please is this a may fact <laughs> sort of <laughs> Does, may that fact. sounded so unappealing <laughs> this a uh, little anecdote about a bird and stuff uh <laughs> this bird um he forgets to go south for the winter because he's having so much fun he's partying and so he forgets to go south and then he looks around all his buddies are gone and uh he freezes as it gets cold his <gasps> wings freeze so he can't oh, no. flap he can't fly away and then a cow is walking <laughs> by and um shits on him and uh this is a children's story i don't know who the target audience is <laughs> but he's now covered in cow shit and it, but, but the, it, the cow war- it warms him up and yeah. it thaws him but then uh he's stuck in the shit and so this cat is walking by and he's going let me out of the shit and the cat gets him out of the shit and then eats him and the moral <laughs> is not everyone who shits on you is your enemy and not everyone who gets you out of shit is your friend Oh. Whoa. <laughs> hmm. I this kind of good with night the- night, kids. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good because uh you know with Turn forgive- the light with off. Forgiveness, like you know, not everyone who wrongs you is your enemy because you might learn a lot from them. You could if you reframe it as yeah. like, wow, that really taught me something. Yeah, I mean you can still learn something from people that don't shit on you <laughs> no that do and they meant to yeah that's true you can for sure walk away going all right yeah. you can learn learn you can learn stuff from people's shit that is true mm-hmm. reason season lifetime but it also is helpful when other people in your life do admit to their part in it 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to move on or find some path forward when the one person they're they're so wrong that they're like I can't even face it. So I'm just mm-hmm. like not going to talk to you or we're going to have a dysfunctional relationship. It is helpful when you can bring your own awareness to the situation. Yes. Yeah. And and in, a sense of injustice is hard when you you want everyone else to when they have a strong narrative of why mm-hmm. they're right and and they're they're popular, they're out, they're talking and you got you find yourself ranting to your friends being like, but don't you understand about this and this person? And then it, you got to let go and be like, yeah, you got to let go. Yeah. Let go and let God. Let go, let, let, go, God. And let God. Reason, season, lifetime. Man, we're like dropping some nuggets today. Well, should we hear what uh, Sarah has to say? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So I realize that I'm asking a question that I myself wrestle with. So I'm not quite sure that I will have an answer in a compact sense in terms of um, having gotten to the end of the process of what it means to forgive or what it looks like to forgive. Or do I think it's possible for human beings to really forgive? I think the truth is, for me, it lives somewhere in the space of And it's not that it depends on the situation, because even in the smallest situation, I sometimes wonder if forgiveness is something we seek and therefore would like to believe we've arrived at, in, whatever the grammar would be there. But I sort of feel like forgiveness feels aspirational to me. I'm not sure I've ever had it really settle into my body in terms of having felt that I've been wronged or harmed uh, emotionally or intellectually or spiritually and felt that I was able to truly forgive, like purely. I'm talking about the purity of forgiveness um, in, an all, in, an almost, um, in an almost holy sense. I've never been able to achieve it. And there is a part of me that has come to consider that maybe it is something to aspire to, but that it is maybe not something that I personally feel we are fully evolved enough to to experience. I wonder if we think we have, and maybe I'm speaking entirely personally, which is what I'm trying to do here, which you know maybe I'm not doing very well, but the idea that I think I know what it feels like to forgive intellectually. I'm not sure I know what it feels like to forgive completely and truly and wholeheartedly in my heart. I think sometimes um, those two things don't feel integrated for me. And this is one of those things that feels like it lives in an ambiguous space. So maybe I asked a question that ultimately doesn't have an answer. And I think that's okay too. And I also really might be speaking to a personal limitation that I have and that I would like to find a way to not be limited by. And at the same time, I sometimes think when we live in a world where people talk about, you've got to forgive, you've got to forgive, you've got to let go, you've got to let go. And although I think that is the most, probably most challenging thing in the world to do, but also one of the most, uh, significant things to reach for in one's life. At the same time, I just sort of feel like it sets us up sometimes to feel like we're failing if we're unable to, you know? And I I wanted to sort of release myself and anyone listening from that feeling of failure if they feel unable to arrive at a place of forgiveness when they've been wounded, you know? I don't know. I that's like, that's nice mm-hmm. yeah like i a lot really of people probably need to hear that <laughs> yes yeah. and i really relate to it's it can be infuriating when people are like you have to forgive and forget and it's like i don't have to do anything like leave me alone I, yeah yeah but uh it's got to be possible but no uh it, it it you can't no one can tell you to do it, it and I'm, you you have to feel the anger first and i think it's case by case well i get what she's saying it's like we we think like oh yeah we for- forgive and forget move on you might forgive but there is something probably internal that is holding on to some morsel of something to reach the highest level of true forgiveness 
mm-hmm. uh, where you feel where you're cleansed of it might mm-hmm. be um, a, a level that humans as is are incapable of reaching aside from a small handful. Mm-hmm. I, I have a fact. Oh boy. <laughs> so Let's hear it. They did a study and um, of all these different species like gorillas, dogs, uh, all kinds of species, dolphins. And after they would get in physical fights, they would, all of them like have a recon conciliatory moment later if they're in a little small community like they they would go and like hug later or have a moment except cats cats mm. do not do it cats <laughs> if they they wrong each other they're they're, they're holding on to that they're holding on to that grudge or they're not making up wow yeah. interesting <laughs> well, oh, well you know at the end of the day we all uh have a little ego involved in the hurt so that yeah. mm-hmm. also makes it hard to fully move on I mean, yeah. it's no good if uh, you're beating yourself up about it, too. I think it's a cool yeah. way to think about it. Like she, um, Sarah said, it being an aspirational thing. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's enough, I think. If you're, if you're yeah, having the, having the aspiration of like, I'm going to work towards trying to be better at forgiving uh, to the best of my ability. Yeah, that's and, cool. very aspirational. And it's also worth it to just have those very deeply uncomfortable moments where you have conversation with people mm-hmm. because when you stay in conversation in an argument or mm-hmm. all of that uh it, it and you don't let the the bridge between you fall yeah. mm-hmm. um it's it's really helpful and it's hard it's so yeah. hard yeah so yeah hard. i think that's why that ghosting became a thing because people did not want to have uncomfortable conversations they did not want to face having to let someone down or tell yeah. someone this isn't working out. Yeah. But ghost. It, yeah. If you have, <laughs> if you force yourself to have those uncomfortable conversations, it is for the best in the long run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It gives the other person an opportunity to grow. Mm-hmm. Otherwise over multiple lifetimes, they're going to be inflicting psychic wounds on people. That's right. Without ever evolving. They're going to just stay a cat. I think we also don't want to get on Sarah's bad side. Oh, yeah. 1 million percent. I agree yeah. with everything she said. Yeah, because I don't think she'll forgive us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, if she'd like to hang out. Yeah, Fortune and I are... Since you guys are friends, I Maybe guess, she'd want to go hiking with you. <laughs> we, <laughs> look, give Jail her your email. email. <laughs> give her your email. Give her my number. email. No, you I'll and make, Sarah. I'll make sure yeah. to check my spam yeah. in mm-hmm. case I don't hear back from Sarah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we appreciate uh, Sarah... Uh, giving us such a lovely and thoughtful question and yes, answer. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much. We appreciate everybody for tuning in to this week's uh, episode of the Handsome Pod. Uh, some cool things. Uh, we're uh, still selling merch. We are. It's flying off the shelf. So get yours off now. The shelves. Get it we're, now. Seriously. We, we might be adding a few more new things at some point just because it has been so popular and we love people out there repping uh handsome we've been tagged in a lot of posts you can go to handsomepod.com to get that merch also thank you to everybody i think we said it before for tuning in to our first live show that was so cool the live Mm -hmm. stream and subscribing to our youtube page yes Mm -hmm. indeed and and uh liking and sharing and telling telling friends tell your friends and review the podcast that's that right always gives us a leg up when you review it and you subscribe that is most important if you want to see this podcast continue hear it continue subscribe so if you want to see our episodes on video you can go to youtube uh youtube.com at the the symbol at handsome pod that is where you can see our beautiful faces mm, handsome fortune do you what do you have coming up um i have a lot of fun shows i'm on tour i'll be in washington dc and then for my european folks london and amsterdam the end of january madison and milwaukee wisconsin wisconsin (laughs) (laughs) oh fortune (laughs) i forgive you wisconsin houston los angeles uh, New York City and Toronto dates are all up there, and I'm doing my uh, next special in Seattle. Uh, those tickets are up for April. Go to fortunefemster.com for tickets. Nice. 
Well, I'll tell you now, if anyone cares, I'm going to be in Peaksfield, New York on March 8th. Uh, and then I'm also going to be in Maryland. Uh, I don't have that in front of me, but I think that's January or February, maybe April. I don't know. Love also going to be at Largo and Dynasty Typewriter here and there. Stephanie and I, have ha- we did a show the other night called She Said, She Said. And um, I, I heard about on, this. We sat on stage together, <laughs> and I talked about our relationship and family and everything. And then she chimed in with her thoughts, and then the audience would chime in with things that they related to about what we were talking about. It was really oh, fun, cool. and amazing. I think we're gonna uh, continue to do That's that. Great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. I got very little. <laughs> to say for myself except this comes out on the 15th and on the 16th of january i'm at largo um with a very exciting surprise guest um and and you two are, are gonna do it you're that's yeah right. yeah you're we're gonna be there. there as well i have it in writing via text that you guys are down you're gonna so that'll be all three of us at largo um yeah that'll, that. that'll be super fun we're gonna blow the doors on that joint <laughs> yeah also yeah. make sure you go to tignotaro.com for any shows i'm forgetting and apologies for any cities that are like oh, what i thought you were coming i am i'm i'm probably gonna be there i just <laughs> forgot all right until then keep, keep it, it awesome. Awesome.